you know, with Gravitas. Now, the Indian government is encouraging people to go cashless, get on the digital payment bandwagon by using smartphones to make payments. In fact, some reports say that the number of digital payments increased up to 80% after the ban of currency notes of 500 and 1,000 rupees denominations in India. But wait, the transaction you just made using your Paytm account to pay your electricity bill, is it safe enough? Most likely not. Qualcomm, a US-based semiconductor and telecommunications equipment company, has revealed that none of the mobile wallets operating in India are safe and secure due to major security vulnerability. In fact, the company has even questioned the safety preparedness of the Indian government when it comes to cashless uh, push and digitalization of the entire economy. We talk about the fears, the challenges, and the way ahead for India or any other economy in today's world to go cashless, and at the same time, ensuring citizens don't don't have to pay the price for using technology. Now, while the Indian government continues to push for digital transactions for mobile phone users who think digital mode of payment is the safest and the easiest, here's a shocking revelation. Aditya Dhunna explains. Smartphone chip maker Qualcomm has come out and said none of the e-wallet apps in India are safe enough to transact. Now, why do they make such a claim? They say that these apps do not have any hardware level security which leaves it open to a lot of loopholes. Now due to these loopholes, Qualcomm says that your fingerprints or your PIN code can be recorded and anyone on your behalf can carry out a transaction. Now if you are transacting through these apps for the first time, experts say you should not park too much cash into your e-wallet or uh, store in your credentials for that matter. Because of a missing layer of security, anyone who has access to your phone, whether it's a confidant or a hacker, could bypass your phone security lock and access your e-wallet and transact on your behalf. All right, let's just talk about this. Uh, joining me right now is Mr. Rohan Kara. He's the director of product at MobiQuick. Mr. Sam Temple, cybersecurity expert, JumpSec, joining me from London. Also joining me this evening is Mr. Pavan Dugal, cyber law expert. He joins me from New Delhi. If I can come to you first, Mr. Sam Temple, give us a sense of, uh, uh, you know, uh, in Europe, how safe are these e-wallets transactions done through your mobile phones, through, uh, uh, you know, your computers? Uh, oh, uh, hello there, first of all. Yes, um, how safe? That's a, that's a very good question. And I, I think the answer is it depends. I, I don't think that the uh, security problem in Europe has been fully solved. Certainly, there are a number of uh, payment service providers that are providing this service through, you know, the, the Android payments and Apple payments. Uh, I think... Uh, you know, crime is in, in this area is relatively low, but I, I don't think we've got a good measure yet on, uh, as this is a new technology, I don't think we've got a good measure yet on what sort of uh, crime figures there are at this stage. All right. Uh, All right. Uh, uh, coming to uh, you, Mr. Rohan Kara, you know, with demonetization, we've seen, a, you know, sudden rise in the number of digital transactions. How is your company keeping up with those numbers? To begin with, you know, thank you for having me over. It's actually a fantastic times to be in the uh, digital wallet and the fintech space in general. Uh, post November 8, since when demonetization kicked in, we've seen a surge in overall traffic, we have 40 million plus users, uh, 2.5 lakh merchants which accept MobiQuick as the source of payments. Uh, we have seen an 18x surge in transactions. So overall, uh, a very, very uh, exciting phase for anyone to be in this uh, industry. Uh, we've been keeping pace and we have been scaled, we have scaled very seamlessly because since day one, the company has been about seven years old. but. Since day one, the overall architecture of technology has been laid out very schematically. So scaling has not been an issue, even when uh, our users, our transactions, overall engagement has a shot through the roof. 
So, Pavan Duggal, personally speaking, are you a user of e-wallets? Do you subscribe to any of those uh, services? And also give us a sense of, uh, you know, because we do know all of these e-wallet kind of services are not foolproof. They run on Android modes or on, uh, you know, other softwares. And possibly, uh, possibility of a pass uh, password being stolen is high. Also, fingerprinting, uh, I think, is uh, not that difficult in today's day and age. So, everything can be hacked. And that's the precise reason why I, as an individual user, do not uh, use any of the e-wallets or mobile wallets. As um, a student of cyber law who's working in this space, I know for sure that you are actually jumping into the fire. And if you do not have an adequate, uh, which is an efficient fire suit, the chances of you being potentially targeted an attack could be relatively high. I mean, I mean, if you is, being a cyber law expert are saying that, I think the message is uh, pretty loud and clear, right? To even uh, uh, Sam, to you, as well as to uh, Rohan. Uh, so if that's a question well, directed at me... I'll, I'll ask this for your reaction, sector. Sam, in just a bit. Just a bit. I'm going to come back to you. Let, let Mr. Duggal continue for a bit, yeah. Well, the reason why I say this is because this is an unregulated space. As of today evening when I'm talking, India does not have a dedicated cyber security law which can actually define the roles and duties of various stakeholders in this space. Further, in the absence of any dedicated digital payments law or mobile uh, payments law, we are completely in a gray area. So these mobile banks, not other financial institutions, all right, we seem to be having some connectivity issues with Mr. Duggal there. But Sam, coming back to you, you know, you're an expert. Uh, don't you think that such uh, uh, systems, you know, should be made mandatory for apps and, uh, you know, especially where money is concerned, where people's hard-earned money is on the line? Uh, yes, I, I agree fully. I think there should be some form of legislation and certainly... Uh, a number of, uh, you know, a, a standard and a number of tests developed to measure the security of these e-wallets. Certainly, if people are being encouraged to use them, they should be able to have the confidence that the government has done it, you know, everything in their power to ensure that they're as safe to use as possible. There's never going to be anything uh, approaching 100% security. But uh, in a cashless society, that there certainly needs to be these checks and balances in order to assure people that these technologies are safe to use. And certainly, th these, they're, they're here to stay. We're not going to see a turning back to a cash, uh, current, uh, cash society now. We're, we're moving forward towards a cashless society, whether we like it or not. So the more the government can do to, to legislate, the better. And the more the providers, uh, not just the US provider uh, that was mentioned before, but the, the application providers can do to, to make these systems as secure as possible for use, the better. Right, so the way is forward and we must ensure that, you know, everything moves in line uh, with, the, you know, these apps. Security has to be in place. There's only one way forward. That's very well put. Coming to you, uh, uh, Rohan, you know, of course, your business is booming in India. We recently announced the demonetization move, the government here. Several million transactions, the, the volume of these transactions is huge. How do you ensure that all these customers, their money is safe and secure? That's a great question that you ask. Uh, at MobiQuick, security uh, and maintaining the data uh, and the privacy of, of the data, of the user's data, uh, is, is at the DNA of everything that we do. So it's not just another thing that we need to do at the end of the laundry list after everything has been done. But for every feature enhancement, every new product development that goes into the app or the website or the mobile site, security is one of the main fundamental bedrocks which gets taken care of. So uh, let me give an example. Uh, we launched the new and improved uh, security pin for our Android apps, which prevents your app from any kind of fraud or any kind of risk. So before any debit to the wallet happens, whether you're trying to do a recharge or a bill payment or even transfer money to someone or to your bank account, that pin is imposed 
and unless you enter that pin the transaction cannot go forward so uh, such kind of measures this is just one of them such kind of measures have been baked into all our products and we are very confident that users will love the kind of security that we provide right right mr duggal if i can come to you what what does the law say here in india because uh, remember we are still very new to this whole system of going cashless so what does the law really say what happens if uh, tomorrow i'm making an e transaction through an e wallet app and my money gets uh, lost in transition somewhere what do i do what is the legal recourse that i have first and foremost let me let me inform you there is no law If you are looking for any redress mechanism, my unfortunate answer is that you do not have any effective mechanism. Uh, even the mobile payments that I am doing with the mobile wallet service provider, it's not a legally authorized payment in terms of not being recognized by any law passed by Parliament. It's a contractual payment. And what are the various rights, duties, and obligations that these uh, service providers need to have? in the context of handling and dealing my sensitive personal data are gray areas on top of it even the parameters pertaining to cyber security which need to be actually adhered to are pretty much in the gray so clearly india currently in the this scenario when we want to move towards a cashless economy is number one have a detailed dedicated cyber security law which can actually enhance and elaborate all these roles responsibilities and responsibilities of stakeholders number 2 have a detailed uh, digital payment and mobile payments law so that people's doubts can be cleared effective remedies need to be given to people whose monies are going to be lost right. due to cyber crime number 3 cyber crime is growing massively through the roof and we need to come up with stringent punishments for these emerging kinds of cyber crimes and finally the indian cyber law is lost deep in the woods it's time to wake that law make it updated by a new amendment and make it in sync with ground realities if india requires a push towards the digital economy then all these steps need to be done almost simultaneously in order to enable the right. indian consumers to be safe and yet we moving on to the that cashless economy there's a long way to go but uh, sam would be able to give uh, us a better perspective on you know because india is in its nascent stages as well, uh, as far as going cashless is concerned more dependence on uh, uh, you know the internet for doing our transactions but what about europe give us a sense of the laws there uh, as compared uh, to india which is just about getting started <laughs> okay so i should probably start by saying the law isn't my field of expertise um but but i can i can certainly say that there are a number of standards and a number of regulations that uh ensure that providers of payment payment security applic uh, payment applications have to jump through various hoops to ensure the security of their services however i i do think even in europe more could still be done um uh the the question of liability is not uh, it's it's not something that for me i i think has been addressed uh to its uh to to the right level so you you asked a very good question earlier about if you were to lose money uh from your e wallet who right. would be liable um and i don't think that's a question that's been answered in in europe To, but to, but, um, but isn't that up. isn't that surprising though because uh, uh, you know looking at the progress and the uh, dependence on uh, you know e wallets uh, be becoming a cashless economy less and less dependence on paying in cash more so in Europe and America shouldn't we then expect things to have moved a little bit faster as far as uh, you know cyber laws are concerned Well I I think uh I think oft, often the law is one step behind technical development. So technology is moving at such a fast pace and uh certainly the payment industry and e-wallets have uh, have really taken off and and to a degree they're very much reliant here in Europe on the payment card industry data security standard which is uh you know in, which in the case of e wallets being li linked to credit cards which would apply for you in india as well uh and also there there's a reliance on fsa regulations so financial uh, services authority 
who, who certainly regulates um, uh, organizations uh, in the financial sector. In, but um, I don't think there's, uh, there's certainly no specific standard uh, to, to regulate this in, in Europe, to my knowledge, uh, other than the, the standards that were already around. So there's certainly a lot of, uh, you know, we have a, a lot of legislation around data protection um, and uh, there's, there's other legislations coming in, uh, GDPR, which is uh, all around p personal details and uh, so, so there are a lot, a lot of periphery standards and legislation right. make right. it. So legislation, uh, that's the fact what you mentioned and very crucial technology in this day and age is uh, changing so rapidly. But the legislations, they of course take so much time. So perhaps the laws uh, need to be upgraded at that pace when it comes to uh, cyber security. Coming to you, Rohan, uh, we, we started off by talking about this Qualcomm report saying that digital wallets in India are not safe. Uh, but none of these wallets use any hardware security and that's what Qualcomm has highlight to safeguard the rights of the customers, their money. Uh, do you find any merits in the claims uh, by a Qualcomm? Yes, I did read the Qualcomm report and if you read it carefully, uh, they're talking about the hardware not being very safe. So it's not a crack on the software side of things, uh, the same business in which MobiQuick or other e-wallets are. Uh, they're talking about certain chips not being present in the devices created by Samsung or Apple or you know, pick any other of the phone manufacturers. Uh, at the software level, the app which MobiQuick makes, the one which gets installed on Android phones, on iPhones, on iPod touches and so on, is very secure. Uh, we are PCI DSS compliant. We are ISO 27001 certified. And we are undergoing a bunch of other audits to ensure all the other checks and balances mandated by RBI are in place. And uh, if you read the article carefully, you'll also see they are promoting their own product. So it is not a very unbiased view of the state of security of e-wallets in India. Right. Mr. Duggal, uh, you know, there are some companies in China, if we talk about Alipay or WeChat uh, and Apple Pay as well from the United States, they have a certain security model which makes them safer, according to a report. So shouldn't then these apps be made as models and then be made mandatory again for other applications to use these standards, to stick to these standards so that, you know, the problems and the transactions, the theft, they're minimized? I completely endorse your thought process. It's no point to reinvent the wheel. Let's look at international best practices and standards which are already existing, which are working fine. Let's adopt them here in India. Let us have uh, minimal legislation, minimal regulation, and more enablement because this is a transformative phase as far as the Indian digital uh, march is concerned. And we need to take the best benefit of the mobile revolution and with the government's push on uh, digital uh, cashless economy mode, it's but essential that not only these international best practices need to be followed in complete letter and spirit by these mobile applications, but more significantly, mobile applications need to be also more responsible and accountable for transactions that are happening on their networks. And therefore, somewhere down the line, they need to adhere to minimum common standards of cyber security, because at the end of the day, the customer is the king. But if you are not going to actually uh, protect the interest of the customer in terms of giving him adequate, effective remedies, should he lose money in mobile wallets or e-wallets, that's going to lead to discontentment. And given the kind of huge challenge that you have in registering a cybercrime case in India, uh, the criminal rem remedies are also not good enough. So right. I think we need to do a balancing of approaches, and we need to come up with uh, approaches which can be customized to the specific requirements of the Indian society and the Indian nation. All right, uh, Sam, coming to you, uh, your, do you agree with what uh, Mr. Duggal, uh, one of our panelists, just said as far as you know, international best practices, adopting them to make uh, you know, work easier and faster? And also, I'm, uh, I'm interested to know your view and how you look at the demonetization, the currency ban in India from that perspective, looking at that India is mostly an agricultural economy, 80, more than 80% of transactions have been taking place in cash and suddenly, uh, you know, to uh, I India is uh, supposed to go cashless. How do you see this uh, whole development? 
Well, I see, certainly I see it as a, as a change is always going to be difficult. And uh, moving towards a cashless society is inevitable. Um, I think it's the pace of change that, that's going to be critical here. Uh, uh, certainly, the technology is there. The technology is very new, though. Pushing people towards the technology before they're ready for it is possibly not the right thing to do. I think, personally, this technology will uh, proliferate into society very, very quickly in any case. Um, and the security will come with it. I personally use uh, an e-wallet, um, very comfortable doing that, but I also don't put all my eggs in one basket. Um, I use electronic banking, I, 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 I use cash, and I think to a degree this is probably going to be the model that will happen in India. Uh, and as people's trust raises for the, you know, the use of e-wallets, then they're going to be... Right. So right. you're, you're saying... Uh, Tailor make, uh, you know, according to an individual needs, spend cash where cash needs to be spent, use internet banking, use e-wallet wherever there is a need. And don't just uh, put in all your money from an account into, let's say, one e-wallet application, because that's certainly very, very dangerous. Nobody would want to do that. Uh, uh, coming to you, Rohan, very quickly, how do you see the future of digital wallets provided we have so many cyber threats and, uh, you know, not very stringent laws here in India? So security is not something, uh, I, I, let me put it this way, security is not just a destination. It's a part of the continuous journey, as in when you keep evolving the product, as in when new business models come in place. Uh, security will be at the heart and center of every new product development which goes on at MobiQuick. As this evolves and as India becomes more cashless, adopts the different form of digital payments, security is something which will always be underlying to any new feature development or product development. I don't think you can divorce that and just say, okay, I'm gonna add security at the end of it and worry about it later. It'll have to be thought through from day one uh, when you start conceptualizing or at the whiteboard level. All right, Mr. Dugal, you talked about uh, how to upgrade India's cyber laws. Uh, would you also, how, would, how do you see the future of digital e-wallets in India? Uh, and do you also agree with the fact, uh, you know, that a combination of uh, using e-wallets to use internet banking perhaps uh, and also use a bit of cash as and when required and wherever needed will be key in the days to come a combination and uh, knowledge about that uh, obviously is key surely india has got a unique uh, current position in mobile revolution history and that being so the indian requirements being unique we will have to see a combination and culmination of various strategies so it will be internet banking, it will be mobile banking, it will be ca some bits of cash. So it, it, these will be all different uh, flowers which will flower in the Indian garden. But the question remains is, for this entire Indian garden to blossom, it's important that this uh, trust of the government must have enabling legal support uh, available. So currently, the absence of any adequate remedies for People who become victims of cybercrime are uh, trusting areas which require immediate attention. On top of it, there's a need for enabling regulation of this sector per se. And uh, it's even nice to say that let's come up with specific regulation for the e-wallets and the mobile wallet sector per se so that they can grow far more times. The current levels of what they are, I expect them to grow 100 times uh, right. if this ecosystem has been put in place. So I think all stuff will have to be done together and cybersecurity will need to be inculcated as a way of life amongst all stakeholders along with enabling legislation and effectively enforcing the law as all also right. making all so, stakeholders so, accountable. So I think we all are in agreement here when we say that a multifaceted approach is needed as far as India going cashless and, uh, you know, uh, removing people's skepticism about uh, you know using these apps is concerned if the laws are stringent enough if the systems are in place then why not people would like to go cashless i believe uh, with that we'll have to end this uh, discussion thanks so much uh, mr sam temple mr pavan duggal as well as rohan kara for joining us this evening on this edition of gravitas we're taking a short break be back with lots more news and updates stay with us